Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome once again to your live Investment Dominator Q&A call. Uh, my name is Warren Davis, and it is Monday, the 18th of May, 2020, and we're going to start here to um, with a little public service announcement for this evening where we want to welcome everybody to the Investment Dominator Q&A call and want everybody to do as much as possible get their questions answered today. Today's format is going to be a little bit different than we anticipated. Uh, we've had some instruction from you know the powers that be so that we can be ready for our two-day Investment Dominator workshop that's coming up here on this Thursday. Um, the, I believe it's going to be the uh, 21st, right? Um, 21st and 22nd. So this Friday, you know, virtually, of course, we'll be having our two-day workshop. Hope everybody, first of all, can see my screen and can hear me okay. Let's see. I've got to see if I can get my indicators here. And uh, anyone out there just want to give me a Okay, we can we can see your screen and we can hear you. Okay, thank you very much. All right. We're going to go with that there. And you can see the LPG deal flow here that's up. That's good. Make sure we're sharing the right screen. All right. Very good. Okay, everybody, we're going to uh, want to get your questions answered. For those of you that are brand new, there's quite a few brand new folks with us. Um, as you know, in the two-day workshop, we'll be going through everything you see on this LPG deal flow. Be showing you how to select a market, get a contact list, and mail your letters and talk to sellers and do preliminary research. Mail your offers out. We're going to be actually be mailing an offer out of that two-day workshop. Those of you that have been through, you know exactly what we're talking about. Open escrow. We're going to show you how to do a detailed research, calculate the market value for a property, and put out an offer. And how about marketing the property with or without owner financing? And then we're going to show you how to sell the property. We're going to go through every single aspect of the deal flow, and that's what we're preparing for this particular Monday. So we're here to get your questions answered. Those of you that are brand new, if you would, please use the control box and I'm sure that uh, several of you out there already, you know, have already uh, done this, you know, lots of times. But those of you that are brand new, just joining us for the first time, we had quite a few, from what I understand, signed up uh, within the last, since last Thursday when we had our last uh, Q&A call. So you're brand new, just got your investment dominator probably over the weekend. And so uh, with the control box there, you have a place where you can type in your questions. Appreciate it if you would put the word question or a question mark in front of your actual question so that I can distinguish between questions and comments. That helps me a lot. Okay, and then uh, don't worry about the little hand sign here. I normally don't, I'm not able to see that anyway. Um, when we are getting the questions answered, because there's so many of you in the room. Um, yes, ah, very good, Lori. Yeah, we've got several joining for the very first time. So we want to say welcome to you. We're excited about you being able to use this great CRM to do your work and to help organize your business. Uh, we have up here the Investment Dominator screen and those of you that uh, just received it, you know that when you log in for the very first time, it is going to show you. In fact, I'll just go on and do that so you can see exactly what to expect. When you log in for the very first time, you're going to see pop up this Welcome to Your Management Console. And this is simply a walk through a lot of the major functionality of the Investment Dominator. So by hitting Next uh, right here, hitting Next, it will just carry you through a series of screens that will show you um, which 
you know the major functions of the investment dominator and you'll be able to see those screens just keep hitting next and it'll take you through the different screens and the different aspects of the investment dominator uh, when you get to a point where you want to end the tour after you've gone through i, I rec highly recommend you going through the tour at least so you can begin to familiarize yourself with some of the major functions. Once you're done with the tour, you can just say end tour. And that will be it, it will end the tour for you. Let's see, as we stated, when you, each time you log out and log back in, you will see that tour pop up until you decide to end the tour and you can disable the tour by here, say enable welcome tour. And if you say no, this will disable that tour and keep you from having to uh, see that pop up every single time. So any of you that have uh, questions around some of these first time, uh, this beginners basically presentation, go ahead and type your questions in. All right. And um, I'm hearing that someone said they cannot hear. Okay. If you cannot hear, let's see. Best thing for me to do is type in a question here since you won't be able to hear me. Exit out. Okay, I'm hearing that uh, most of you can hear me fine, but you want to exit out of the webinar and back in again. Okay, hopefully that will clear up uh, those that are having any trouble. Okay, most of you are saying you can hear me. Very good. Thank you. Hopefully this will help uh, those that are not able to. Okay, so coming in, of course, you know, as I stated, if you want to turn off that enable uh, the welcome tour, you can just say no right here. Also, the the big three that we're going to discuss tonight are basically um, the big three items that we expect you to have set up before you come to the two-day workshop. Um, so before you come to the two-day workshop, we want you to have uh, profile information set up, number one, which is under the profile. But even before I go into the big three, I want you to know that those of you that may be on looking for Thursday's activity, uh, Thursday session, we're going to have a webinar on Thursday. It will only go from 12 to 12.30. So we'll have it for 12 o'clock Pacific time till 12.30 Pacific time because I will also be in the two-day workshop. So we'll have 30 minutes where you can ask questions and I hopefully to give you some answers. Um, tonight's focus, we're going to, we're going to look at the uh, big three. So the number one item that we'd like to have you complete is in your profile section. And this is where you actually have a signature set up in the session. Now, if you have a signature that you want to upload, if you have a signature on your computer, you can upload a signature, um, but in uploading the signature, you must uh, crop it. So we're asking, you know, for those of you to, uh, if you if you want to uh, generate a signature, it's much easier. Just come over here and just say generate signature. Type in your name, you know, and select the font. And of course, um, once you select the font, if you want to select color, all right, very good. Uh, all of you checking in, those of you that want to, if you once you select the font, we get the question all the time: Can we select or can we bring in our own custom fonts? And these are the only fonts that we have available here. So as you select one, you'll see it change your signature. Now, if you want to have color added you left click on the color box and you can then select a color and once you select a color make sure the color solid box is populated 
once this color box is populated, you're able to select some of these more hybrid colors here. But uh, if you want to just select the regular blue, you can select blue, click OK. And as you can see, it changes your signature. If you select it, the color box is there. You can select the more hybrid color and click OK. And as you can see, it changes your signature. And the last thing you do is say insert signature. And there it is. This is very important because the signature is going to print out on your neutral letters that go out of Investment Dominator. So it's very important that you um, set up your signature. Now I'm going to go right to from here, from this signature or from the profile, I'm going to go right directly into the main um, crutch of this entire, um, what, what we want everybody to be able to do for, um, well, I should I have plenty of time. I should have plenty of time to, to finish that. So uh, what I'm going to do is go in order as I normally do. Uh, go ahead and, and make sure you, you complete a profile. Make sure you hit update because um, without hitting update, this will not save. I want you to know that each login, Investment Dominator works, each person that logs in must set up their own profile. So if you have multiple users, um, if you have multiple users, then you will have to have multiple profiles with with um, each person having their own signature. All right. All right. So, um, big three setup, and we started first with. Uh, I'll come back to some of your questions after I after I get through the big three that we want you to have set up. You know, we have a question here about how to crop um, if it comes out too large. Okay. Uh, we will show you that here in a moment. Secondly, we want to make sure that you have set up in Investment Dominator your company information. This is also very important for the two-day workshop. As you can see, what we're going to ask, first of all, that you have an email set up, a company email. So this is where all of your company correspondence is going to go. Um, by the way, under the profile information, this profile information, this is personal. This is a personal email address. You want you to put your name, your last name, your personal email address, and a personal phone number. This is for the office to know how to get in touch with you. None of this information is going to print out on any of the documents that go out of Investment Dominator. So it's got to be personal information here. As opposed to over here and your company information, you have a company email address where you want all your correspondence for your company to go. You also have a company name, okay? And we recommend, now you don't have to go out and set up an LLC you know, between now and Thursday, but at least have the name of your company. We definitely want you to have all of this information populated. Set up an address, company address. Now, if you don't have a company address right now, we want you to get a, like from a UPS store, uh, get a PO box there, but we don't want you to type in P.O. box here. We don't want that, okay? So don't type in P.O. box. Use the address of the actual UPS store and the city, state, and zip. Any address in here is fine. Please do not use your personal home address, even if you're working as, uh, you know, you're working at home. Do not use your home address here. And many people have asked us why, and the reason is because sellers and buyers of property sometimes get a little silly. You don't want them sending you anything to your home address or knowing where you live, okay? So for your own safety, for your own sanity, please use an address from the actual store. All right, the, um, with the address there and you have your company name, you're fine. So let's discuss real quick your phone systems. There are three phone numbers represented in your company information. You have the company phone. You have the offer phone, all right? And you have the selling site phone. Three phones, but you don't necessarily need three numbers. Okay, you have a company phone and the offer phone. These two phones 
are specifically for sellers of property, people that are going to sell you their property. So those of you that may choose to use Ring Central, uh, Ring Central gives you one phone number. See, I have the number 510-555-4545. And I have the same number, I can have the same number in my offer phone because you have two different extensions. So these are both, again, these are for sellers, people that are selling you their property. The offer, offer phone, rather, and the company phone. Company phone is the first phone number that will go out on your neutral letters out of Investment Dominator. So the way your voicemail would work when they call the number from Ring Central and they press extension one, your voicemail will say press extension one if you're interested in selling us your land. If they are interested in selling, us, selling your land and they press extension one, that will go to Pat Live or uh, some other, it could be Smith AI or it could be callme.com, another what we call a, um, Pat Live is a call center, all right? Pat Live and Ring Central are not the same organization. Pat Live is a call center, all they do is answer the phone. Ring Central is a phone system, so it supplies a phone number. Now Pat Live will also supply you a phone number which Ring Central, when they ring the Ring Central number, it will be forwarded to the Pat Live number. But keep in mind, these are two separate organizations. And let me show you a diagram here real quick. When you select one number from Ring Central, extension one will be forwarded to Pat Live, where they pick up your neutral letter calls 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Extension two, will be forwarded, can be forwarded to a cell phone, can be forwarded to a Google Voice, but this comes from that one number. So one number, two extensions. That's what it looks like. Now, once you have that set up, your third number, your selling site phone, remember these are your buyers of property. Once you have land under contract, someone says, I accept the offer that you sent me, you will now market that product or market that property and it will go on your selling site, which is where they will find your selling site phone number. These are your buyers of property. So now you have one of two choices. You can have Ring Central can give you a second local number. You don't need to have an 800 number, a second local number. And when that phone number rings or when that phone number comes through you know it's a question about someone that wants to buy property you want to keep your buyers of property completely separate from your sellers of property over here these are two different markets so you want to have a phone that is dedicated to just your buyers of property that's why you have this local number two okay uh, and it will come through here the second number and then it can be forwarded to a cell phone that you designate um, so that you know it's someone that wants to buy property that's one way you can do it uh, my company we didn't have ring central in place when we started the business so we have a separate cell phone altogether it's not even a smartphone it's just a separate cell phone with unlimited talk and texting so when that phone rings it's a black cell phone when that phone rings I call it my money phone. Somebody wants to buy property. So in, in other words, you don't give out your selling site phone number to family or friends or associates. That is a phone number that's dedicated solely to your buyers of property. Hope that's clear. So those are the three phones that are represented in the system. Then you have your company time zone. We wanna make sure you put that in. And of course, if you are a real estate agent or if you're working with someone who has a real estate license regardless and they're part of your company you want to specify yes we have to disclose that here if not you can press no and it will take it away but if it's yes disclose that and use our disclosure here that's already put in the system for you just so that it discloses you are a real estate agent or associated with one in the business Hit update site. That will update all of your company information. Remember, Investment Dominator does not automatically save. 
So you've got to make sure you see the site is updated message for every uh, situation uh, where you're updating data. So we have the profile information. Make sure that there's a signature in the system for every login. Then we, of course, have a company information set up with your phone system set up. At the minimum, on Thursday, those of you that will be joining us on Thursday, please make sure that you have at least this offer phone in here. Be good to have the offer phone and the company phone. You don't really need a selling site phone, not for Thursday, um, but it would be good so you can see it display on your site. If you don't have one, that's okay, but we're gonna be sending offers out on Thursday or Friday, probably Friday. I wanna make sure that you have your offer phone set up and your company phone. Okay, now the third of the big three. This is the most important part that we want you to have done before the two-day workshop. So essentially, this is Monday, today, so you basically have tomorrow and half day on Wednesday if you're back in the East. Uh, we want to have this complete probably by three o'clock, um, you know, Eastern time. So that would be 12 noon on Wednesday. Uh, we need to have a buying site and you need to have a selling site domain purchased. Uh, you purchase these domains, hopefully from GoDaddy, and the .com, uh, the .com are uh, 1299 for an entire year. So for your buying site and your selling site, give you a little guidance behind that. A buying site name might be uh, www, you know, lynnbuysland.com or www.joebuysdirt.com, something like that for a buying site. Just to let people know, hey, all I'm buying is some dirt. Don't expect me to pay top dollar for it. So that will be in your name, www. and whatever you want to have buys land or buys dirt. In the selling site, I want to make it a little bit more glamorous. So it might be www, uh, choice land for you or www.paradiseland for you. Something that uh, you know tracks people's attention, letting them know again that you're selling them quality land. Two different domains, all right? So the first step is to purchase those domains from GoDaddy. Once you've purchased these domains from godaddy.com is what we're recommending. We want you, they should give you a username and password so that you can actually sign in, all right? And have a sign in. Now I'm gonna call your attention to, before I sign in and show you how to do this, I'm gonna call your attention to a help article. So up here under help, you can hit help, then search our user guide, all right? And type in the words custom domains. Okay, there's quite a few of you on, on the line and, and quite a few questions coming through. And I'll, again, I'll go back and try to answer those questions as soon as I get done presenting the big three here. I want you to type in custom domains and hit search. This will bring you up a series of articles. Article number two here, how to change your website's domains or custom domains. Left click on that and open it up. And you wanna scroll down here to where you have step one, register your domain and point it to our server. That's where you're gonna actually log in to godaddy.com. So the important thing is to purchase your domain first from GoDaddy. And by the way, after you purchase the domain from GoDaddy or whoever you might wanna purchase this domain from, uh, at least with GoDaddy, they send you an email that allows you, that, that you must log, um, you know, get onto that email, access that email that they send you, and you have to verify your email address. Um, for us, our login is our email address, our company email. And the point I'm making here is we had to log in to our, this email, receive the email from GoDaddy, 
and we had to confirm or verify this email address. In other words, our domains were not available to us until we verified this in our email. So I'd encourage you, when you purchase the domain, check your email and make sure you get that verification email so that you can verify your email address and your domains will become active. Without that, uh, you won't be able to access your domains and do any of this, the instructions that I'm about to give you here. So here we go. When you log in, it's going to default to my products. All right, I'll show you exactly what that looks like. You log in, say sign in. It's going to come up here, it's going to default should default to my products, showing you all the domains that you've purchased. If you do not see this my products, you can come over here under your name, scroll down, drop down the menu and just go my products. It'll bring you to the same place, okay? So again, following your instructions, scroll down and you wanna select manage. This is step number three, select manage next to the domain you'd like to configure. So again, if I wanna configure one, I'm gonna hit this manage box over here to the right, select that. It's going to bring up the domain that I have already purchased at GoDaddy. The next step says under DNS tab, I wanna select manage zones. Okay, make sure it's manage zones. So under the DNS, which is a drop down menu, select Manage Zones. Next thing I want to do is as the search box come up, I'm just going to type in the domain that I purchased. This one um, it could be your buying site domain or your selling site. Start with your buying site first. Left click to select that. And as it's coming up, the whole idea here is we're gonna come up to our record section here. That's step number six. We're gonna click the pencil next to the C name and it should be that it's a WWW C name record. As you can see here, it's kind of small, but uh, it's the C name record. So you go back here and here's your record section that has just displayed. Now, there's there could be multiple C name records displayed. The only one you're concerned with is the C name record associated with www. All right, so you're gonna hit this pencil over here to the far right. And as you hit the pencil, as you can see on my screen, there's a box that's going to display. It's gonna have the host, it's gonna be www, and it's gonna say points to yours because it's brand new, your domain will have an at sign in this points to box, all right? Those of you that are curious, an at sign looks just like this. That's an app sign or ampersand, whatever you want to call it. That is um, what's going to show in this box. So what you want to do is backspace that at sign and type in the words investmentdominator.com, lowercase, just as you see here. Under the next field, TTL, that's time till leave. You want to select custom. All right, so drop down and then a seconds box is gonna pop up and instead of it being 3,600, you wanna make it 600 seconds. Very important. So then you wanna hit save. Now, if you're on Namecheap or if you're using Google for your domain provider, these same instructions must be simulated on their environment because the important thing, after you hit save, you'll see that your WWC name record should be pointing to our investmentdominator.com server. And again, this is on the GoDaddy side or on Namecheap or on Google, whichever your domain provider is. Uh, you wanna have it be 600 seconds. That's 10 minutes. So there are some domain providers that don't have a 10 minute. Some of them, like I think Namecheap has a 20 minute. So you'll, that's, that's the only thing you'll be able to select. You won't have a 10 minute selection. But the important thing is it must be pointing 
to the investmentdominator.com server. Crucial step here for this all to work. Okay, so after you've hit save, our next step here is you want to set up a forwarding. So this step number 10 must set up a forwarding. And on in uh, GoDaddy, you just scroll down to the forwarding section, hit add, and you want to have the uh, domain, or excuse me, uh, associated with the domain is where you want to set up your forwarding. Now, what a forwarding does is today when people type in your domain, like let's say, you know, donbuysdirt.com, all they type in is the domain name. They don't usually put in the www dot in front of that domain. Well, the forwarding ensures that www dot is placed in front of that domain name, you know, uh, donbuysdirt.com, so that it finds your site successfully. So all you have to type in is www dot and your domain name. Here we have a permanent 301. It defaults to that, so you don't even have to select that. On GoDaddy, it also defaults to forward only. And it also defaults to update my name servers and DNS settings to support this change. So here you are. You've got this all set up. So only thing you're changing is www dot, putting in your domain name. When you've completed that step, your forwarding will look like mine here with www dot and the domain name. Uh, this is a step that a lot of folks uh, miss. And so when someone comes up here and just types in their domain name in the address bar, it does not find their site successfully. So don't forget to do the forwarding. And if you're on Namecheap or Google or REI Black, Black Book or whatever it is, you'll still have to point your domain to the investmentdominator.com and set up some type of forwarding so that it works the same way. Okay. So now obviously because you have a buying site and a selling site, we want you to come through this list of steps two times. You come through it for your buying site, then you come back up here again, go to DNS tab, select manage zones, you know, manage next to the domain, type in the domain, and come through the list of steps a second time. You also set up a forwarding for your second domain. All right, very important. Now, once you're all finished, you've come through two times, buying and selling site domains are set up on GoDaddy. Your next step is to map your domain or you want to go back into the investment dominator and ensure that your domains are configured properly. So the last steps here are to go into your buying site domain, web, website settings buying. So you saw I came up under customize first, come up under customize. When the menu comes up, you wanna to go to website settings buying. All right, open that up. And here, is where you're going to, all you're going to access is change your domain. That's it, just that one selection, it's a big black bar. Change your domain, you left click. And don't worry about the old buying site domain, Domain. just enter your new buying site that you just purchased with GoDaddy, like, um, you know, donbuysdirt.com. And you'll click yes, because I've pointed my domain to the investmentdominator.com via WWC name record, because that's the word work we did on GoDaddy. Then you hit next. No changes here, you're just confirming. So you just hit confirm. Now here, very important step, do not hit okay. You wanna click here, you wanna select click here to secure your domain. It's a big black bar. So you left click on that. It's gonna give you a free, we give you two free SSL certificates with your Investment Dominator account. SSL stands for Secure Socket Layer Certificate. And basically what it's going to do, it's going to put a lock on your buying and your selling site so that when your customers come to your site, they can see that your site is secure. Without this lock, you'll see the words not secure when they access your site. 
not something you want them to, to see. So for a new domain that you just configuring for the first time and you're mapping it in Investment Dominator, you will see this box over here that will say Generate SSL. Mine says Renew SSL because it's already been generated. Make sure that yours says Generate SSL. It's a nice blue box, so you left click on that. The system is gonna spin for about 10, 15 seconds, and then it's gonna give you a message saying that your SSL certificate has been generated successfully. So you go on and uh, at that point you can click OK. But now you're still not done yet. Your domain will not display like mine does here until you scroll to the bottom and hit update site. Very important that you get all these steps down. All right, so one happens, um, when you're done with your buying site, you wanna come in here and click, left click on the selling site and go in to change your domain, type in your selling site domain, you know, paradiseland.com whatever it might be, say yes, I've pointed it, click next, no changes here, click confirm. Do not click OK here, click here to secure your domain. So you left click on that. Remember, generate your SSL, your secure socket layer certificate, left click on that, and the system will spin for about 10, 15 seconds, It'll give you a message, click OK but you're still not done yet until we do what? That's right, scroll to the bottom, hit update site. Very good. Now, once you're complete with those three items, folks, you are ready for the two-day workshop. You have between now, if you haven't had this set up right now, between now and Wednesday, 3 p.m. Eastern time, to have your profile set up with your signature to then have your company information set up with your company phone, at least your company phone, and your offer phone. We want you to have your company email, your name, and your address set up because uh, this, this information will be printing out on documents even during the workshop. And finally, the, big, the biggest one, your buying and selling site domains. If you do not have those domains in place before the two-day workshop, before Thursday, and you have your sites configured, if you do not have that done, there'll be certain exercises that you won't be able to enjoy and learn from because you will be busy setting up your sites. Trust me on this one. You really don't want to show up on the webinar or on the uh, two-day workshop without these three, that's why we call them the big three, being completed. So someone had put in a question, um, someone had put in a question, you know, in the buying or in the selling site, um, as we are here and we're going through, we click next, someone asked a question, um, what if you click OK instead of click here to secure? If you click OK, it will come out of this particular box, right? But you have not secured your site. So A, you will still see a, another black bar down here saying secure. And when you come down here, even though you update site, um, when you go to bring up your site, when you type in your domain here, what's going to happen? is you're going to bring up trying to bring up a buying site you will not see this page you will not see your buying site page what you will get is an error um, that's saying that it's basically missing your site that's what's going to happen if you don't if you click ok without securing your site it's now tied to the fact that you need to secure your site uh, before you can successfully complete the configuration of your site. So, okay, good question. If we don't, I have to make sure I mark down all the questions. Um, hit secure. 
your site. And you just bypass that and click OK. OK. Very good. Um, is it absolutely necessary? Good questions. Is it absolutely necessary to use Ring Central? Howard is asking. Is it necessary to use Ring Central? No, it's not. Um, Ring Central, since Google Voice is free. Uh, no, you do not have to use Ring Central. Ring Central, by the way, understand these are third party uh, vendors that we suggest to you because. We want to, as quickly as possible, help you organize your business and make sure that you'll have the functionality um, that you need. You don't necessarily have to use Ring Central. As a matter of fact, um, you know Google Voice is is free. So under any of your phone systems, you know um, this could just be Pat Live's number here if you want to use Pat Live. This could actually be a Google Voice number that forwards to your cell phone if you want to take all of your neutral letter calls. We've had a lot of folks start out like that, um, and trust me, they you know after the first well the first few weeks where they get all these calls all different times of night, they decide they would rather use um, Ring Central or some other system. Um, just for your own knowledge. Um, there's also, instead of Ring Central, there's also Pat Pat Live, which is a call center, but they have a system called Tresta. Tresta does exactly what Ring Central, one number, two extensions, and um, from what I understand, they're a little bit less expensive. So. You can use Pat Live's Tresta. Um, it's the same as Ring Central. So you do not have to use Ring Central. And you know, for your offer phone, this can be another number. This could be a Google Voice number, as I said over here. It can be a Google Voice number or a Skype number. Um, we're just trying to help you organize it based on what we've seen, some of the challenges that our students have, uh, this, is, this is why we're suggesting these types of uh, systems for you to use. Okay. If you're having any issue with your phone systems, have they been set up? Your best recourse is to call, if it's using Ring Central, call back your Ring Central representative and have them walk you through what may be happening if you're unable to forward your phone calls um, and let's see a lot of the questions that I'm coming up here with are is uh, Gordon Gordon's asking can the company phone number be the same as the offer phone can phone or company phone Yes. Be the same. Yes, as offer phone. Yes, it can. As I say here, I have this phone number is my company phone, and I also have my the same phone number here in the offer phone, and it can be exactly the same because I have two separate extensions. Remember, I'm using either Ring Central or I'm using Pat Live's Tresta, right? So if you're using Pat Live Tresta, one number, two extensions, or Ring Central, one number, two extensions, you can have your offer phone be exactly the same as your company phone. Because when the remember, when the caller calls in, there will be a voicemail that says press extension one if you're interested in selling us your land, press extension two, if we've sent you an offer and you wish to discuss that offer or accept that offer. 
So that's the way the phone numbers can be di can be the same. They don't have to be different. They just have to be represented in your phone system. Okay. Let's look at some of um. Okay. All right. So Abby's asking, can Ring Central or Pat Live accept a text? Or Pat Live accept text? No, that is, to my knowledge, they cannot. Text messages. Um, no, normally, of course, obviously, you know, that's done through a cell phone, which has a cell tower, and you can, you know, that's one of the functions of a cell phone. Ring Central and Pat Live, both, um, if you're using any phone system, that's usually they give you a number, a actual phone number, that you would not be sending text to. And these numbers here, for Pat Live or Ring Central, um, you really don't want anyone texting this phone. Let's say if I have a Pat Live set up to take my neutral letter calls, I actually want a human being to talk with the human being that's sending the message. So we want them to actually call in. We don't want them to text in um, to a number because remember, when they when they access this number, it's going to be forwarded to Pat Live or forwarded to Smith AI, which is another call center. It's going to be forwarded so that someone with a pulse can actually take the call and put, then you want that person to put that record into your investment dominator, into your land deals records. They'll put it in here as a, you know, as an offer request. So you don't want someone basically sending a text with this kind of information because it would go nowhere. That would be a big waste of your money. Okay. All right. Uh, someone's asking about the, Sherry's asking, uh, what is the company phone used for? All right. Company phone used for the company phone represents your neutral letters. A neutral letter is the very first communication that goes out of Investment Dominator to all of the people that you have on your list that you're mailing to. It's the initial communication that goes out to say to your customers, I'm interested in purchasing your land. Your So, so anytime you send out a neutral letter, Investment Dominator pulls the number from your company phone. So that's why you definitely want this phone number populated. Then when someone responds to this neutral letter and they call back Pat Live and say, uh, or they call you back and say, hey, I'm interested in getting an offer. Then when you go into action and give them an offer and you print them out an offer, your offer phone then comes into play and the number associated with that gets printed out on your actual offers. Okay, hope that answers that question for you, Sherry. Um, I'll tell you, some of these are rather long questions that we will get a chance to answer uh, in the Investment Dominator class, uh, the two-day workshop that's coming up. Okay, let's see. Okay. Okay, let me. Um, Susan's got a good question here. Let me make sure I check to see what's the deal with the schedule. Uh, there may not be any spots left. Uh, here we are coming up kind of to the 11th hour. Um, what I will have to do, well, okay, 
Well, I'm showing that uh, tomorrow, the 19th, that I do have uh, spots. Susan, you're saying that there were none left. Um, I do have a spot open at 8 o'clock a.m. tomorrow, which is uh, Tuesday, the 19th. I have an 8 o'clock and an 8.30 left over according to my schedule. Um, if you call the office, if you need a spot and you call the office at 602-712-0175, they're probably gone for the day, um, 602-712-0175. Um, let's see, oh, it's for tomorrow morning though, 8 o'clock, that's going to be before they get in. Okay, this is an unusual request here. <laughs> I'm going to see what I can do here for you, Susan. Um, let's see real quick here. Uh, we, we try to encourage folks to get in as early as possible. And uh, Susan, this is my first time I've ever had this one, this request. All right. So, Susan, uh, if you in the in the communication, go ahead and send me a phone number and an email address. And uh, that's going to be the most important. If you send me that, I will be able to schedule. It'll be eight o'clock uh, eight o'clock Pacific time, which would be eleven o'clock. Eastern. All right, that's probably the best I can do for you there. All right, if we get that set up, we will be able to help you out. Um, let's see. All right, does the Ring Central, Ben's asking, is Ring Central 800 number, does Ring Central 800 number offer extensions? Um, you would have to check with Ring Central, Ben. Uh, I don't think so. It, he says, do Ring Central offer extensions? What I understand is Ring Central gives you a a uh, Ring Central gives you a local number. So wherever you're local to, it gives you a local number. I don't know why it wouldn't do it for an 800 number, but you would have to call them and see. It's not necessary to have an 800 number. They can give you a local number. A local number or should be an 800 number. You can press one or press two. Um, that's the option that they set up for you on the Ring Central side. So you will have to call Ring Central for sure to verify that. Okay. Does Ring Central. 800 number offer extensions okay we've got a few minutes left here let's see what else we can uh, help folks with here in terms of questions okay yes for those of you that may want to go over this presentation again it's a very good question from Dan, okay? How to see this presentation. Again, because this particular video will not be ready probably um, until sometime on Wednesday, maybe by close of business tomorrow, but more like Wednesday. So those of you, you're looking at my screen under help. If you wanna see this presentation again, so you hit the help function, go under weekly live Q&A training calls, and click here for replays of previous live Q&A trainings. That's the last one down here, left click. And specifically, the last one we had was, uh, the last Monday was the 11th. So you can left click on that. And here I'm showing the big three. What are the big three setups? You can play this like at the end of this call. You can play this tonight if you like. Over here to the right, there's a video, right? And I put the timestamp on each of the questions. So at four minutes and 35 seconds into this video, I'm discussing signature. 
if you need help with signature, if you need help with the company information, nine minutes into this call, this video, you will find the company information. And for domains, 15 minutes, 45 seconds into this video, I'm discussing the domains. So how can this presentation be seen again? Uh, yes, there's a, I mean, there are many of you on the call today. We have over 60 folks on the call with us here this evening. So a lot of questions coming in. Um, please go back and review this at your leisure so that you can make sure you know how to set up the domains, that you know how to set up your company information. And again, check out the 511. So that was last Monday, 5 p.m. And uh, we ran through all the big three set up there. All right. Let's see how else I can help someone here. Okay. Um, let's see. What are the steps to set up profiles? Oh, profiles for different workers. All right. What are steps to set up profiles? Okay, we'll be going over this uh, too in the, um, for different workers. All right, very good question. The answer to that is under your team. All right, so in the investment dominator under team here, left click on team as you can see there are different users set up and uh, investment dominator allows you to set up multiple users you can set up multiple admins so what you would do you come up here and you hit add user and if you're setting up a worker that is not a partner in the business but just a worker make sure you set them up as a rep do not set them up as give them admin privileges. And then, you know, you want to put in their first name or if it's Pat Live, um, Pat Live there, you might set up there and it might be REP01 for a last name. An email would be pat at patlive.com is an example. And then, um, see, it's telling me this email already exists. So, I have to come up with, I uh, can I have more than one of the same email for multiple users, right? So then you have to find out Pat Live's uh, 800 number and you can definitely do that by going under help, search your user guide and just type in call center. When you search, how to use a call center to take your phone calls and it talks about pat live here we go their number right here you can use that number all right and put it right in there and of course whatever uh, your time zone is and under username you would set up a uh, username and i would if i were setting up username i'd go um, pat live REP02 or 03. Let's make them consistent there and give them a password. Now, if I were setting up a Pat Live rep, I would have them have the exact same password. So that's easy for them to get in. And then here we go. We set up what we call their permissions. All right. So this is basically how you set up users in your system. We want to make sure you don't allow them to do anything they're not allowing you not allowed they're not allowed to do we will cover this in the two-day workshop when you're done you finish and add user so if you were setting up another partner in the business again under your team if they're going to have admin privileges you add user leave them as admin put in the person's name and put all their information you notice as an admin it defaults to all of the same permissions that you can do as an admin. 
So basically as an admin, you're gonna say yes to everything. So um, that's the way you would differentiate or add different uh, users to the system so they can log in. Uh, we'll cover all that in the two-day workshop. And I'm afraid that we are out of time here. Hopefully this was helpful for you to get set up and we'll be welcoming all of you to the two-day workshop as it comes up. Uh, allow you, looking forward to meeting all of you and excited about you being able to use this CRM to organize your business. I wanna leave you with a thought for today. Continuous effort, not strength or intelligence, is the key to unlocking your potential. That's a quote from Winston Churchill. Continuous effort, not strength or intelligence, is the key to unlocking your potential. I want you to have a great evening and we will look forward to, okay, thank you, Susan, for that information. We'll have you set up uh, for tomorrow morning, um, eight o'clock and uh, 11 o'clock if you're on the Eastern time zone. Everyone take care and uh, have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye everyone.